Welcome to chapter 12, section 4, proving triangles congruent with side, 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 or side, angle, side, which is shortened to SSS or SAS. This is for integrated math 1 or IM1. Uh, so a couple things on the screen, just to go over them. You should see a due date on your student screen. You don't see it on my teacher preview here, but you'll see it on your student screen. Um, you'll also see um, the number of attempts here. You always have unlimited attempts for homework assignments, tests, and quizzes. Uh, meaning you can come and complete these assignments as many times as you would like. A uh, number of questions. This just tells you how many particular, how many questions this particular assignment has. Um, grading policies, best score. So whichever attempt is the best one is one you keep. And partial credits enabled. So if you answer one of four questions correctly, you get to keep or you get credit for the one question or however many you answered correctly. Uh, down here it says once you start your homework, you must finish it before you can work on anything else. And what that means is once I click start down here, in the bottom right corner, we will see a submit assignment button. I don't see it on my teacher preview again, but you will see it on your student screen. It does two main things. So first, just like that other screen just said, it's going to um, not allow you to work on anything else until you click that submit assignment button. So I can close this screen just like I would any other screen, but then it's gonna leave this attempt open. Remember, we have unlimited attempts. So I can try this assignment as many times as I would like. Um, it's going to save my place as well, too. So as long as I've answered the question and I have a little green check mark here, it'll start me back where I left off. I'm not going to start over. Um, so definitely make sure you click that submit assignment button so it doesn't lock you out of all of your other assignments because that's what the program is going to do. Um, the other thing that it does when you click that button is it allows um, your teacher to see what you've been doing because it affects the grade book. So until you click submit assignment, it's almost like your account's paused. We can't see anything you're working on until you click that button. So good habit, always click it. Um, on the right side here, we have explanation, example, and message center. Um, explanation literally tells you you're going to lose your question attempt because it's going to give you the solution to this question. So it's not going to give you the solutions and, you know, answers unless you come type them in. Um, that's You're going to have to come in on another attempt to try that. But you can click on example here, and it will show you an example of something very similar to what we're looking at. Um, and show you how to, you know, fill that out and what to do here. Um, you can close this, you can open another example if you'd like, and then you can also message your teacher directly from the screen to ask questions if you get stuck or anything, and it, it attaches a picture so we know exactly where to help you. Okay, so let's go ahead and start these. So we're proving triangle congruence, so we're actually going to do four proofs here, um, and I know proofs are everybody's favorite thing. Um, it's really just a practice in not just how do I move through a problem, but why. Why do I know I can do these things? So we're going to make statements, and then we're going to say why. How do I know that that's true? What property, what postulate, what theorem, or definition tells me that I'm allowed to do that? Um, so the very first thing that you want to do is take a look at your information. So what's happening in this diagram? We definitely want to be paying attention to just the diagram itself. What are we given? So I'm going to take a copy of this real quick and put it over here so that I can kind of mess with this one. And I definitely suggest, you know, you probably don't necessarily have a copy paste feature that you can do like what I'm doing, but you can definitely draw this on your page. And I 100% um, have students do that in class. If it's something extra that aren't, it's not on the notes page that we already have a picture of, we draw it because that way you can label um, and you can draw on it. You can kind of mess with it a little bit here um, because they don't label everything. They tell us that the two triangles are congruent to each other and I didn't copy that top part here. Or no, we're sorry, we're proving that the two triangles are congruent. Help if I read the statement there. Um, so that's what we're going to prove. Well, we just learned in section two that there are four ways to prove triangle congruence. We have side, angle, side. We have side, 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 angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. We have these four ways right now. There are actually a couple other ways as well, but right now these are the four ways that we have. Um, and specifically on the title, that's another thing. If you're paying attention to the titles, that helps a whole lot. I know I'm only going to be focusing on these two because the title and I know it's cut off here, but it specifically said side, 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 or side, angle, side. So I don't even have to worry about these other two yet. We'll worry about those other two, um, I think, in the next section, actually, when we move forward there. Um, so this, 
we want to focus on how do I get from what I have here to you know one of these um, properties that lets me prove triangles congruent. Um, so when I'm looking at this piece, first I'm given some information, and I definitely want to mark my diagram up to show this given information. So I'm given that ST is congruent to VT. So ST is this piece here, and that's congruent to VT. Sorry, VT. I'm doing it funky there. And then we have RT is congruent to UT. So I have RT, and I'm going to do two tick marks. And UT, two tick marks. So one to one, two to two. Don't use just different colors on those ones because we I've talked about that in other videos when we're doing congruent marks. There can be all kinds of reasons why that could go wrong. Um, if I did just, you know, different colors here and all of a sudden you couldn't see the colors anymore, say it went black and white, you're not gonna necessarily know which marks belong, you know, to each other because they're all just one mark. Or even if we had someone that was, say, colorblind, they wouldn't necessarily be able to tell the color markings differently. But everybody can generally see, right, that we have one to one, two to two. That should be, you know, consistent for everybody. We can see that visually, that those are different. Um, all right, so this is the given information. And we want to be able to prove one of these two things. So I already have side, side for these ones. So I'm either going to prove a third side congruent, or I need an angle. So I'm, I need to kind of play with this. Before I even look at the statements and reasons over here, I'm just kind of looking at the diagram and going, okay, well, how do I get from what I'm given to where I want to go? I want to think about it first, kind of plan this out. And then I can start going over to my statements and reasons and actually filling out this proof. Um, so if I'm looking at this RS and UT, I can't really prove anything about the third side. There's nothing I can do. There's no postulates or theorems or definitions I can go through that would help me know that those sides are congruent to each other. Um, but what I can do, and I'll do this in pink, is this angle here in the middle, I can choose something about that. So anytime I have this crisscrossing happen, I can use vertical angle theorem. And we use this all the time. So I have this kind of X crisscross happening. I can go across the vertex like this, these opposite angles, and these two angles have to be congruent to each other. So now I have side, angle, side, and remember it has to be the included angle, meaning the one in between the two sides or the one that creates the two sides like this, okay? So it can't just be some random angle out here. Um, it has to be that included angle. So I, I I can show by side angle side that these two triangles are congruent to each other. Once I have this side angle side, I know they're congruent. Um, so now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take a look at the statements and the reasons. So ST is congruent to VT. Well, that was a given. Remember, we have to put our given information into the, the proof or it doesn't exist. So it might seem a little redundant. I was, I was already told that. Why do I have to put it down here in the proof? It, everything that we use in the proof has to be stated in the statements and reasons or it, it truly doesn't exist. So now I'm going to go UT because RT is congruent to UT. They told us that and they already put given in here. We just had to fill that piece in. Now they're showing exactly what we did over there. So it's RTS, so I had RTS like this, and then that's congruent to UTV. If you notice that the angle or the correspondence is correct there. So they started from the top and went to T and S, and then they started at the bottom and went to T and V. Because R and U are going to be corresponding. S and V are corresponding. So they're in corresponding order. Um, and we've talked about that. I know we talked about that quite a bit in the last section, the corresponding order. So the reason we could say that those two are congruent to each other, and we can see there's a whole lot of reasons on here. Um, and you can click on this little question mark and it'll pop it down and give you the, um, the actual statement for, you know, what it means for each one. And I know on the notes pages I have all of these listed. Um, we do have a plan right now to add pictures to that just so that we can see the visuals of it. Um, I don't think I've done that yet, but depending on when you're watching this video, it might already be done. Um, so vertical angles property, that was the reason we could choose that these two angles across from each other were congruent. We can't call them T because angle T could be 
this angle here, it could be this angle here, it could actually be this exterior angle or this exterior angle. We have to be more specific than just angle T. That's why we have to use three letters to name an angle. Um, we could use angle R or angle S because there's only one option for those. It has to be this one or it has to be this one. Um, you wouldn't say it's this out, outside one here because that's more than 180 degrees, so we don't have an angle name for that. Um, that's definitely um, a very large angle outside of there. Um, all right, so the last piece we have RST is congruent to um, triangle v, UVT, and so we already kind of identified that by just looking at this triangle, SAS. That's the reason we were allowed to use, so we need to scroll down through our list again and find SAS, and again, if I click on this little diagram, it says if two sides uh, and the included angle of one triangle are congruent um, to two sides and the included angle of a second triangle, then the triangles are congruent, which we proved. We have two sides congruent to each other and the included angles congruent to each other. All right, so, and I know proofs can be very different because it requires us to kind of think through what we're doing. Um, before we just start, you know, jumping into it. Um, so with this one, I'm going to take a copy of it. Um, and if you notice on the last one, we knew it was going to be four steps and it was fill in the blank. This one, I don't know how many steps this is going to be. Um, I have to go through and I have to put a statement in here, give a reason, and then I have to click this validate button. So I don't necessarily know how long this is going to be when I first start it. So I definitely want to go through and kind of make a plan because it may let me put in steps. Um, generally, it's not gonna let you put in steps that aren't needed, but it might let you go kind of the longer route instead of the, the short, you know, how do I just get to the, the end result here um, without having to go around the long way? Because sometimes there's more than one way to complete these as well. Um, so if I'm looking at the diagram, I can see I have two triangles and I also have this um, kind of parallelogram-ish looking diagram. I can't say it's a parallelogram because I don't actually, I'm not given anything about parallel lines, but it does kind of have that look to it. Um, so DE is parallel, so this bottom is parallel to FG, which is the top, and then I also have angle EDF, so that's this one, the, the angle in the middle, that's where the you're gonna mark the angle. So right here on D, E, D, F. So that's always where the, the middle part goes. And then G, F, D is also congruent. Um, so I could actually prove some parallel lines here if I wanted to because of the way this is set up. I have alternate interior angles. If alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So I could actually prove that at least this line is parallel to this bottom line if I really wanted to. Um, but we're not paying attention to parallels at all, so I'm kind of going off on a tangent there. Um, but um, for this one, I want to take this given information here, and I want to get the two triangles are equal to each other or congruent to each other. Um, so I have a side and an angle. I have a side and an angle. So I know right away I'm not going to go with side, 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 because I'm not given at... I, generally I'll have to be given all three sides or two sides and have a shared side. Um, I do have a shared side in this one so if we're kind of paying attention to that um, this FD they both share this side so both of them have this same length for F FD it's not different from one triangle to the other it's the same exact segment so we're definitely going to use that to our advantage because we know that FD is congruent to itself um, and anytime we have a shared side or a shared angle we're going to use what's called the reflexive property where it says something is equal to itself that's quite literally what the reflexive property says so I know that FD is congruent to FD that's something that I'm gonna have to state in my proof so that I can have this side Right, so now I have side, angle, side. Ooh, I wanted to use either side, 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 or side, angle, side. I already did that by just completing this one step. I have all three pieces that I need because I have my SAS, SAS. So I can go ahead and, and start 
filling this piece in. So remember, you have to send the given information to the proof. There's a really nice cute little button here that says send a proof, so I can just click this. And when I click that, it actually automatically fills in the given because I'm sending it from there. I can also type it in if I want. I need to make sure I'm using the correct symbols here if I'm typing it in. Um, and then I'll have to actually choose given, I believe, um, if I type that in. But I can send these. And you can send those in any order you want. I could have sent the angles first and then the segments. Um, I could have even stated that FD is congruent to FD for my first statement um, and then put the givens in. So these are not in a particular order. Um, and you can think of it as like getting dressed in the morning. There's multiple ways that you could get dressed in the morning, but there's also things that we need to do before other things. Before I put my shoes on, I should probably have my socks on. Before I put on my shirt, I should probably have on my undergarment there, right? Um, hopefully, if that's how we're, we're getting dressed there, you know, things like that. If I put on my shoes before my socks, that's going to cause issues, especially if I want to wear socks, right? I'm not going to be able to get those socks on. So I can kind of think of that idea of getting dressed. There's more than one way to get dressed, but there are certain things that need to happen first. So these, these pieces need to be stated, but not necessarily in any particular order. Um, these first three can be stated in any order I would like. Doesn't matter how they happen as long as they happen. So now I need to do that um, and I, I need to click on the segment line. I do need to make sure I have my little segment line above it because if I just typed in FD, it would not be correct. Um, it would mark me wrong on that one. It wouldn't let me validate it. Um, and I'm going to go segment again and FD. So I know FD is congruent to FD. We already talked about that. And that's by the reflexive property. Um, and I can click on the little eye here. That'll also give me um, kind of the idea here. So, or the idea here. Um, so for any real number A, A is equal to A. Or for any geometric object, A, A is congruent to A. So I can say that things are congruent to themselves by using this reflexive property. To move to the next step, I need to click validate. If it's not correct, it won't let me move forward. It's going to say, mm, something went wrong, try again. So now, like I said, these three steps could have been stated in any order I wanted. I could have moved these around. But this fourth step, to say that the triangles are congruent to each other, because that's where we are already. We're already at that the proof um, section here. I could not have said this before any one of these three. So this is kind of like the shoes. I can't put the shoes on until I have, um, and for some reason I have three socks here, but we're going to pretend like this analogy works nicely, but I, I couldn't do this part until these three are stated. I need my side, my angle, and my side before I can say that the triangles are congruent or, you know, just whatever pieces it is we're working with. If it's side, 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 or side, angle, side, or when we get to the next section where we're doing angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side, um, we just, we need all of our pieces. So now I'm going to go down and I know it's side, angle, side. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go side, angle, side. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and click validate and it tells me your proof is complete. So now I can click check. So I don't click check until I get to this little piece here where it says my proof is complete. So these ones, um, it's actually a little bit harder to get a, a red X up here unless you click explanation because you, it's going to keep having you try over and over again on the validation until you get to the next step, until you find something that you can, in fact, put into your proof. Um, and then you click check once you're actually done with the proof and you automatically get the points for that. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and grab this guy. Boop, 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 boop. Don't, okay. And all right, so now um, again we have our diagram. We're going to prove these two triangles congruent to each other, um, and we're given some information here. So DE is congruent to EF. So I have these two sides congruent to each other. It also tells me that EG bisects DF. Whenever it gives me a word like that, I'm going to have to define it. Um, and if you don't know what bisect means, that's definitely one we want to look up to make sure that we know what it means. Um, but if, if uh, a segment bisects another one, it's not just cutting it, it's cutting it in half. 
Um, so bisect, I'm going to have to define that. Um, I am going to have to send these to proof, and I tend to just click them in order, send a proof like this. You can do them strategically within the proof. It really doesn't matter when you send them to proof as long as they're, like I said, you know, that getting dressed idea, they're in um, sequence, kind of. If something depends on them, then I need to send them first. I wouldn't define bisect as far as what does it mean for the diagram before I've sent eg bisects df because why am I defining that? How do I know what this does to the diagram if I don't even know that it's given to me? So it's just one of those pieces. We want to make sure that we're paying attention to that. Are we giving enough information to move forward? So I know that bisect means to cut in half. So using this word, eg bisects df. So that means that this line here cuts the bottom in half. So if it cuts it in half, that means that they are equal to each other, right? Two equal halves, that's the idea there. So using the word bisect, I can say that dgd or dg, however I want to say that, oop, and I already remember I, for, I did not put the little line over the top, and that's going to be congruent to gf. I'm going to click my little segment piece here and go GF. And the reason is I'm defining bisector. So I need to go down to segment definition. Let's see, it's going to be definition of segment bisector. There we go, definition of segment bisector. Because I was given that a segment bisects another segment, I need to define that. What does that actually mean for my diagram? It means that it cuts that, that segment in half. So I'm going to go ahead and validate, and yay, let me move forward. So now I have um, side and another side. So, and again, I'm only using the two here. It's either going to be side, 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 or side, angle, side. If I'm looking at my diagram here, there's really nothing I can do to prove any angles are congruent to each other. Um, I know that these two have to add up to 180 because they're linear, but that doesn't really mean anything. Um, I don't know that they're equal. Uh, I know that the angles of each triangle have to add up to 180, but that's true of all triangles, even the large triangle, if I put the whole thing together, that, that would be true of that one as well. Um, but what I can see is a shared side. They both share this EG. Anytime we have a shared side, we're going to use the reflexive property because we know that EG equals itself. So this is my third side. So I'm gonna go in here and write, boom, EG, and I'm gonna see if it'll let me, if it'll let me copy all of that. EG is congruent to EG. Ooh, it let me copy it. So EG is congruent to EG, and that is by reflexive property, which is right there at the top. So I can go ahead and validate. Yay, let me move forward. So this one's a little longer so far. We've, we've only had four step proofs, but now I have side, side, side. The two triangles are congruent to each other by side, side, side. As, as soon as I can prove one of those properties, the triangles are congruent. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna look for side, side, side congruence, which is, there it is, side, side, side property congruence, or congruence property. My proof is complete. I can go ahead and click check. I will get my points for that. Make sure you click the check button and you get the green check mark up here because if you leave it here and you left your screen, you will have to do this one again because you didn't actually kind of save your place. So be very careful about that. Uh, make sure you have that green check.